My brother and I were born with um, cancer of the eyes, uh, the retina, and um, my mum told us that only special people get cancer. But I must be very special because I've had it in my lungs and my bladder as well. But the brilliant thing was that the Macmillan nurse, she'll hate it mention her name, but she's called Julie Watts. She was, she was like an angel because you, when you hear them telling that you have cancer, it's, it, it's true that you really don't take it in properly or you just don't think of the questions. And then when you come out, because she's been in there with you, she answers all, all your questions that you hadn't been able to ask at the time or you hadn't thought of. And in a way, sometimes she's like a Henry Kissinger between uh, me and my mum. She, you know, she, she'd explain, because it's, you know, it's, as worrying for the family when cancer hits as it is for you. Sometimes I think it might be worse. But she was great with my mum and then explained everything, took her for coffee. She, she is an angel and we couldn't have asked for, for better support. People affected by cancer need to be at the heart of this partnership and they need to be listened to. And ironically, it, it's through interacting with people affected by cancer that the partnership organisations learn that they need to be flexible, that um, people won't always be able to make meetings because they have treatment or what have you. It's organic and it needs to be flexible. And that's what they need to transfer into the services that they start delivering. Flexibility, coordination, um, serving the needs of the patient. Not only have you actually fought a very, very difficult battle, um, you don't want to fight another battle by getting depressed and having anxiety and fear kicking in. And these are the things that I think need to be identified from the start, um, even prior to even treatment. Knowing what is going to happen, knowing what to expect, and knowing that this sort of support will be put in place for them. And also about being an open access. I think, you know, as just because it may have been a couple of years, four years, five years along the line. As a patient, you should be able to feel that I'm not sure about something, I want to pick up the phone and speak to someone. I think the most significant point uh, in, in realising where the team was and where it was coming from was when my GP arranged, I think what they call a multidisciplinary team meeting and invited my family to join in as well. It was a very sort of intense meeting. Everybody was listening and they were all putting in their contribution at the right time and at the right pitch. And it was only afterwards that I realised that um, everybody there was caring for me. If a patient knows that the surgery is positive about cancer, has a positive attitude and is there for you, you're going to feel a lot more confident in approaching them and feeling that you're getting good advice. Because if you're going to the surgeon, for example, saying to have, you know, you need some blood taken and people don't know, for example, that you can't have your uh, blood taken from your arm with lymphedema in it, you start not to trust the surgery because you're thinking, surely they should know that. You know, so you want people that understand all aspects of the cancer, which I know is a massive, massive ask, but that's why there's so much training and education, because it really will benefit patients if they feel confident in what's happening at the surgery. I've been diagnosed with cancer at the very, very early stages, uh, so I'm really grateful that I went for this lung check. I went to the scanner on the precincts on the Tuesday. It was about 9.30 in the morning and uh, I wasn't there long, I was there about 20 minutes. I was uh, notified by uh, Withenshaw Hospital with an appointment for the Tuesday. So within a week, I went for a lung health check and I was then given an appointment at Withenshaw Hospital within the week. A lot of people have got the wrong idea thinking that you're gonna go in a machine and some people think they'll never come out, but it's not nothing like that. 
I'm not living in fear thinking I've got cancer because now I know I've got it. And hopefully, because of that long health check, I'm going to be living for years. I think the most difficult bit is because I'm under a number of different hospitals with a number of different consultants. Not all cancer, but it all has to be organised together and I have to fill in each different consultant with my story and my journey and where I'm up to and what my drugs I'm taking because I have a thyroid problem. So that is actually dealt with Christie's but a different consultant, needless to say, to the oncology team. Um, I go to Salford Royal for my spine, that is the, the cancer, but again it's a different hospital. I go to Withenshaw because I have a urine infection so that has to be kept to check on. Um, and then there's the breast surgeon at Withenshaw and my um, rheumatologist at Altrincham General. Uh, what's particularly pleasing is that uh, many of the things that myself and my colleagues, not just me, have, have, have said have been taken on board. And so with regard to the presentations, regarding to the written documentation and so on and so forth, it has very actively involved the user's contribution as well. I knew that there was lots of things that I had to um, source for myself um, and I could do that because I'm a confident person and I know where and how to get information but what I realised was that not everyone does so when I, I'd attend focus groups and I'd get reports and I could actually give feedback at focus groups in terms of the things that were important for me one thing that I've found about um, the MSIT project is it's been in hugely encouraging as a patient to see just what goes on behind the scenes. The doctors, the nurses and breast nurses and everybody who has been involved in this pathway of care are so dedicated and are so involved in making your care better. And I think it's absolutely incredible because as a patient sitting in the waiting room with people whinging about time and waiting, they have no idea what goes on behind the scenes and it's absolutely incredible how dedicated everybody is. And thank you.